Hey everybody, it's Kendra. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been here before. My video today is going to be all about June. J-U-N, not J-U-N-E. So what's June, you're asking yourself? Well, June is considered to be the champagne of kombucha. And let me tell you, I love it and I think it tastes amazing. And if you are into kombucha, I guarantee you will love June. Okay, so if you are new to kombucha and June, uh, basically these things are fermented sweet tea. So essentially you start with sweet tea, you introduce a type of bacterial and yeast culture and that stuff, you know, in this whole like magical chemical reaction, it takes the sweet tea and it turns it into this slightly like sour, sweet, vinegary, bubbly drink and it's delicious and I love it. Um, it has a lot of health benefits, loads of probiotics, lots of good enzymes. It's really good for digestion. It can really be good for your skin, detoxification, all this stuff. I mentioned all of these things, all the benefits um, and reasons why you would drink kombucha in a video a couple months ago. I'll link both of my kombucha videos. Um, I did a video on brewing kombucha and one like all about kombucha. So a lot of these things really apply to June as well. Thus, I'm not gonna repeat myself too much. So I first tasted June when I was in Portland, Oregon uh, about a year ago. And there were several different brands of June and I tasted them and I was like, wow, this is really good. But at that point I had just started fermenting kombucha. So I thought, okay, I need to really get my kombucha routine down and then I will venture into June. So I've been doing kombucha for about a year. I started making June about two months ago and love it, it works great. What is the difference between June and kombucha? With kombucha, you are using generally black tea as your tea. Um, I like to do a blend of black and green tea just because I'm not the biggest black tea person, but generally kombucha is made with black tea and it's made with sugar. Now with June, you are using only green tea and you're using honey. So June is just special and it's beautiful and I love it. To me, June just has a lighter flavor. I often find that my June gets a lot more fizzy than my kombucha. Maybe that's why they call it the champagne of kombucha. Um, another really great thing about June is that it ferments much more quickly than kombucha. You know, we're in summer right now, this is July, and sure, I have like the air conditioning on a lot because it's super hot outside, um, but generally, these days it's taken me about 10 or 12 days to ferment two gallons of kombucha. I can have the same amount of June fermented in like six days. It ferments so, so, so quickly. June prefers a colder environment, like a colder temperature, and it also brews more quickly than kombucha. So if you live in a cool climate, June could totally be your answer. I've talked to several people and they're like, oh, my kitchen's too cold. They don't really wanna get a heating pad. I don't wanna do all that stuff. Try June because kombucha definitely wants a higher temperature. Kombucha is generally happy around like 75 to 80 degrees, but June, I think they say like 70 to 75. So could be really good for those colder climates. Another difference between June and kombucha is that June is going to be more expensive to produce. Um, with kombucha, for every gallon of kombucha you make, you need one cup of sugar. Now for every gallon of June you make, you need one cup of honey. So obviously honey is way more expensive than sugar. So it's gonna be pricier, but trust me, it is worth it. It is so, so, so yummy. All right, let's discuss ingredients. So basically kombucha or June, you obviously need tea, you need water, you need some type of sweetener, and then you need a culture. So the tea that I like to use for my June, obviously we need green tea. I like to use this one by Positively Tea, and this is an organic pinhead gunpowder green tea. Really lovely, keep it in my little jar here. We're also going to need some honey. So this is the one I've been using now and it works great. This is from Costco actually. This is their Great Lakes raw local honey. You do wanna get a raw honey because that's just gonna get like all these awesome yummy benefits into your June. Um, water, now I like to filter my water so I use one of these Soma water filter pitchers. Also you are going to need a SCOBY and some starter liquid. Starter liquid is basically already fermented June. So SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. And basically this is the thing that does the magic and it eats all that sugar and it turns your sweet tea into June. It makes it all delicious. So I actually have a jar of uh, June ferment, like already fermented June and uh, June culture. So like the weird white thing floating around in there, that is actually my June scope. Um, I wanna show you the difference in color between kombucha and June. This is June culture, this is kombucha culture. So you can see the kombucha culture is definitely darker. So where did I get my June scoby? 
kombucha camp. Okay, they are wonderful. This is a really great resource, really good website for ordering kombucha cultures and June cultures and kefir grains and like like the vessels and all the different fermentation materials and supplies. The people who run kombucha camp also wrote the big book of kombucha and this is like the bible of brewing kombucha and so much of this applies to brewing june so if you are interested in brewing june and you don't have this just get this even though it's specifically about kombucha you'll learn so much and it will be such a good resource for brewing june so anyway that is where i got my june scoby from and it's great it came packaged in like a little plastic pouch had the scoby and then it had a bunch of starter liquid so when i initially started brewing i made one gallon of june first and then as my scoby grew a little bit larger then i was able to start making two gallons Alrighty, so back in this corner, I've got my June and kombucha. So I've got everything labeled. You'll see over here, I've got my green tea kombucha. And then here I've got kombucha. So this is half black and half green tea. And then here I've got my June. So obviously the June is only green tea. But I want to point out like the difference in color between the June and the kombucha. I mean, there is a major difference in color here. Obviously this has black tea in it, so it's going to be darker. But even the difference in color between the June, which is just green tea, and then the kombucha that I'm doing just um, just with green tea. The green tea kombucha definitely has more of like a brown appearance, um, even though I started them the same day. All right, I wanna talk about the actual vessels for brewing. Now, if you wanna do a really small batch, you could just use a one gallon glass jar, but frankly, I love having the convenience of the spigot. So I like to use these either two or three gallon glass water jugs, and then I actually replace the spigot. So when you buy these, um, the spigots are plastic and they're not very good, and everything just gets clogged up, and nah, they're bad. So I always replace my spigots with stainless steel spigots, and they make my life so much easier. I like to brew in glass. I don't like to brew in plastic or metal. I just, I'm kind of a purist when it comes to my ferments. So everything is in glass for me. I also like to have some of these adhesive thermometer strips because it's really important to know what temperature your ferments are at to sort of gauge like how much time it's gonna to take to actually ferment them. Um, also, I like to use these cute little dish towels to cover them. You wanna keep your brews covered because you don't want bugs getting in there or dust. You might even see some fruit flies flying around here because it's summer and that happens in summer. And then also you're gonna need something to secure your uh, dish towel or fabric, whatever. Um, these are just little hair bands, like the hair bands you would use for exercising to keep your hair out of your face. These work great because they're elastic, they fit to whatever size you need. All right, also I want to show you what the actual SCOBY looks like. Woo! So you can see there's a nice thick layer of June SCOBY here. So these are just layers and layers because every time you brew you get a new layer. But this is what it actually looks like inside. It's kind of weird. Um, it definitely has sort of like that vinegary sour sort of scent. Um, those little black things on top, that's not mold. Relax. This looks completely normal and completely healthy. The black stuff is either going to be little um, particles of tea or just a little bit of yeast. All right, so I'm going to show you how I take this already fermented June, flavor it, and then refill it with some new honey sweetened tea. All right, I want to discuss some other materials that you're going to want for brewing your June. So I like to steep my tea in a large glass bowl. I'm going to eventually have about two quarts of liquid in there, so it needs to be big enough to accommodate that. I think this is probably like three or four quarts. Um, also, I like to have one of these soup ladles. This makes it very, very easy later on in the process. Uh, I do like to have a soup ladle that has a plastic end, not a metal one because I have definitely had some accidents with that when I was brewing kombucha and then ended up with a gallon of kombucha all over my kitchen and that's really not fun to clean. Also, you're going to want something to steep your tea. Now, I always use loose leaf tea in my June and kombucha. That's why I use this big tea ball. If you're using tea bags, obviously you will not need that. Um, also, you're going to want a cup measuring cup and then also a tablespoon measuring spoon. I like to use a wooden or bamboo spoon to stir up my June. Now, you don't want to be using too much metal stuff with uh, the actual finished June because it can be very reactive. That's why I use the bamboo spoon. Also for bottling, you're definitely gonna want some type of funnel. So this funnel is really nice. It does have this little bitty strainer in it. This can be fine if you're just trying to get out little chunks of fruit, but the holes in this can be a little bit too large and they can also let in just 
you know, little strands of yeast, some of the stuff you might not necessarily want in your June. So when I bottle, I always put a strainer over the funnel to just get out all those little bits, um, those little bits and pieces and to just really make it more of like a cleaner sort of June. I don't want any sort of chunks in there or any sort of particles. Also, I recommend having a couple gallon glass jars. These are what I'm actually gonna be doing the flavoring in. So yes, you will need lids. Also for your finished June, you're gonna need some bottles. These small ones are just uh, recycled GT's bottles that I've scrubbed the labels off of. And then the large bottles over here are also GT's bottles. GT's does a larger size of kombucha bottles. So I believe one of these big ones is equivalent to four of these little guys. Also for labeling, I like to use some masking tape and a Sharpie. And of course, I've got my whole bag of uh, bottle caps there. And then finally, yes, this is the big book of kombucha. It's not the big book of June, but so many of the same principles apply between kombucha and June. And this is such an amazing resource for brewing kombucha. All right, first things first, before I actually flavor my already fermented June, I wanna get my new tea started. So I have a kettle here. This has two quarts of water that's already hot. I'm gonna take my tea ball, and then I've got my green tea here. I've got loose uh, pinhead gunpowder tea. So I'm gonna take about six tablespoons of the tea, put it in my tea ball. Okay, and then I'm just gonna close up my tea ball and put on the water. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes. Again, I am making a concentrate, so I don't want to have to wait for two full gallons of tea to cool down. So I'm doing two quarts of hot green tea, very concentrated, and then I'm gonna dilute that with six quarts of cool water. All right, let's talk flavoring. So today I'm gonna to be doing one gallon of peach June and also one gallon of blueberry June. I've discovered that blueberry is probably my favorite type of kombucha and especially June. I absolutely love blueberry June. It just does work so so well with that sort of like slightly sour vinegary taste mm, blueberry totally my favorite. all right so basically to prepare the fruit for the peaches i have just peeled and chopped one cup of peaches it was about one and a half peaches like good sized peaches and then for the blueberries i have one cup of berries that i have taken and actually sliced in half all right so to flavor i'm basically just going to put the fruit in the jar and then put already fermented june into that Okay, now I'm just gonna give my June a quick stir, just kind of get everything stirred up, and then I'm gonna put this into my gallon jars with the fruit. Again, I like to always keep it covered because I don't want any bugs or anything to get in there. And then we do the same for the peach. Also, I just wanna point out how much liquid I leave in here. So for two gallons, you're probably gonna want at least a quart. Um, I probably have more than a quart. This is probably like two, uh, two quarts. Um, but basically the way I figure out how much to leave in, I always try to go around to like the middle of the spigot um, and just leave that much already fermented juice. That's gonna make my next batch nice and strong. It's gonna really give it like all the good bacteria and yeast to really, really get it cooking. I'm gonna let these sit for about 24 hours and you'll really Really see the difference in color change by tomorrow. So I'll come back tomorrow and show you how I bottle. Alrighty, my tea has been steeping for 20 minutes, so I'm just going to remove the tea ball, let it drip off a bit. Also, the tea that is in this tea ball, I'm not actually gonna throw away. I've got some tomato plants and they are massive. So I'm actually gonna put the tea leaves on my tomato plants. Um, tea leaves are great for your garden because they have lots and lots of nitrogen. All right, so now this is one of the main differences between June and kombucha. So what I do with June, I've got my really hot tea here. I'm gonna put this into this cool filtered water first and then I'm gonna add my honey actually to this cool filtered um, tea mix. Now the reason I say this is different from kombucha, if I were making kombucha, I would just dump my sugar into this hot tea and let it dissolve in there. But I'm using honey and I'm using raw honey. So I don't wanna kill all the good stuff in my honey. Thus, that's why I cool down my tea first and then add in my honey. All right, so I've got my cup of honey here. So basically I'm just gonna put that into my gallon. 
So the temperature of this is still slightly warm, but it won't kill my SCOBY. Basically, you don't want to be putting your honey into super, super hot tea because that's going to kill the good stuff in your honey. And you also do not want to be putting super hot anything into your brewing vessel because you don't want to kill your SCOBY. All right, now basically I'm just going to dump in this initial gallon of honey sweetened tea and then I'm going to repeat that process until I finish up my concentrate. All right, and again, you are always gonna want one cup of honey per every gallon of June you are making. So I'm doing two gallons, thus why I used two cups of honey. All right, and then I also always put on a new clean dish towel and then put on my band. And then also I'm gonna put today's date on there just so I have a reminder for the next time. It, and I'm just gonna tuck this little guy away for a few more days until it is ready to go. All right, here we are about 24 hours after I started the infusion, the flavoring process. Um, and we have some really, really beautiful looking June. All right, look at all of those beautiful bubbles coming up. We're really starting to build some nice carbonation in these vessels that are now sealed. Um, you will get a slight amount of carbonation in the initial fermentation process, like once the SCOBY has sort of fully covered the brew, but it's really in this stage when we have a sealed vessel and then also when we bottle it and those are really firmly sealed, that carbonation really becomes apparent. All right, time to bottle. So as you can see here, I've got some bottles. Again, I've got my big GTs bottle and then I do have some smaller GTs bottles. So what I like to do is take my plastic soup ladle um, I open up my vessel and I want to give this a good stir. You can see all the stuff coming up from the bottom. So I want to get this pretty well mixed. So a little trick I like to do is actually put maybe like three raisins. Well, three raisins in this big one. Actually, in the smaller bottles, I'll just put one raisin. So I like to put a raisin in each bottle when I bottle because it provides a little bit of extra sugar to feed the yeast which further um, creates more carbon dioxide and more carbonation. All right, so to bottle, basically what I do is put my funnel in the bottle, and then I put my nice little fine mesh strainer over the funnel, and then I just go to town. And then just cap it up, and we are good to go. You want to keep a small amount um, of extra space in each bottle because there will definitely be carbonation that builds. Alrighty, so there you go. My June is all bottled up. You can see I got one big bottle of each flavor and also four smaller bottles. Also, you can see that I labeled these. So I put J dash and then the flavor and then also today's date. Now I put J just so I know this is June. I also brew kombucha, so obviously my kombucha bottle say K dash and then the flavor and date. You are going to want to leave these out at room temp for at least 24 hours, maybe 48. You're just gonna wanna see how quickly the carbonation builds. You will want to open these up every 12 hours and burp them, as I like to say, um, because carbonation will start to build <laughs> If you're leaving them out at room temp, you want to be opening them up every 12 hours because if you don't, you could have a little explosion. Um, so yeah, every 12 hours, just open them and close them again. See where the carbonation level is at. Also, you will see that the raisins will float. Like this raisin here actually just floated up. I think the peach will probably be super, super fizzy in 24 hours, probably actually in 12 hours. All right, another thing that's really, really helpful, just a random little trick I've learned. Um, I've got 10 bottles here that need to be opened and closed every 12 hours. That can be really hard on your hands. Yes, I am a little delicate flower. Um, but it can be really hard on your hands because you want to close these really, really tightly. So what I recommend doing is getting a pair of these gloves that has this type of like rubbery plastic stuff on it. This helps to easily open them and also you can get a really, really tight seal on it. Uh, you want a tight seal because obviously you don't want that CO2 escaping. You want to trap that and make some really, really nice fizzy June. All right, so there you go. That is how I brew June. That's my process. Again, if this is your first time brewing June, obviously you will not have already fermented June to start with and to flavor. So you would just skip to the second part where you're just brewing your sweet tea um, 
and going from there. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you check out uh, Kombucha Camp and the Big Book of Kombucha, and I really hope you check out June. If you're able to find it, pick up a bottle, try it. Um, I know the brand that I had in Oregon was called Soma, and there may have been one other one, but I can't remember the name. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. If you've made June, I'd love to hear about it. If you've tried June, I'd love to hear about that as well. Um, yeah, happy brewing. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.